One of our biggest limiting beliefs is the belief how limited we really are. The more people understand what they're doing and why, then the how gets easier. There's a formula that we now know that if you apply that formula, you'll begin to see those changes. There's enough evidence to encourage people. And you can't tell me you're too old to do this work. You can't tell me you're too sick to do this work. You can't tell me you had a turbulent past or that you're too overweight or too underweight or too out of shape. Or you can't even tell me that you've never meditated before. In fact, some of our greatest scans are people who just have never meditated before that aren't trying to do anything. They just follow instructions and that magic starts to happen. Then I have no idea. I can't predict what's going to happen next. And it's usually pretty exciting. I think we've been hypnotized and conditioned into becoming materialists. I think that we define reality with our senses, and I think that is one of the biggest delusions. So the fundamental question is, can you believe in a future that you can't see or experience with your senses yet, but you've thought about enough times in your mind that your brain is literally changed to look like the event has already occurred? Now, the latest research in plasticity says that's absolutely possible. And can you select a new possibility in the quantum field? and begin to emotionally embrace that future every single day to such a degree that your body as the unconscious mind, the objective mind does not know the difference between the experience in your life that's creating the emotion and the emotion that you're fabricating by thought alone to the degree that you begin to signal new genes and new ways to change your body to look like the experience has already happened. Think about this every day installing the circuitry every day conditioning the body into the emotion of the future that your body begins to change to look like it's already happened now this is where it gets fun because now you no longer have to go anywhere to get it now it begins to come to you you become the vortex or the magnet to your destiny so then people who come out of their meditation and they say well i just focused on my wealth why isn't it there well you're not that good if you're asking why isn't it there you're back to the old person again stay in that state for an extended period of time as an experiment, as the scientist in your life, to keep your energy connected to the dream of your future. And then see what kind of effects begin to take place without moving into impatience, without moving into frustration, without starting to analyze why it hasn't happened. That is the trap of defining reality with your senses. So if you have the thought of your future and you don't see it, then you experience separation. But people who are practicing this work, they have the thought of their future and they feel the emotion of their future. They're still connected to it, right? That takes practice. And it's just learning, like hitting a golf ball, hitting a tennis ball, dancing the salsa, you know, crocheting, whatever it is, you gotta start out staying real conscious and learning, then you get good at it and it gets to be instrumental, it gets to be fun. And that's what I want for everybody, that the, the act of creation should be a blissful, ecstatic, loose, uh, free process. And so I love the idea of people taking time out of their lives to prove to themselves that if they're defined by the vision of the future, then they're not living by the memories of the past. And that's where the unknown exists. So the unknown is a scary place. So they don't see that future because they're used to seeing that future with evidence, with their senses. And the, you have to be able to get beyond that and stay in the unknown, stay in that discomfort. And then in that moment to begin to self-regulate, like, oh, I'm starting to feel a little anxiety. Ooh, I'm starting to feel a little frustration. That's the defining moment where your body's going back to the past because emotions are a record of the past. Or you go into routine again. So you catch yourself, it's a victory. And if you keep catching yourself, those victories add up. And it's not so much about your wealth or your health or your freedom or your new relationship. It's actually about who you become. And so overcoming the old self allows us to become somebody else. And there is that period of transition call it the void where there's just not a lot happening and you just got to be able to keep going and continuously get to the end of your belief where most people stop because the universe only gives us what we think we're worthy of receiving so thousands of years of programming that says that we have to change things uh, matter to matter in three-dimensional reality and it will take time but to begin to connect to that resource called the quantum field and create from the field instead of from matter, there's a lot of unlearning that has to go on. 
you have to really begin to ask yourself at the end of your day. I do this every day. How'd I do? How'd I do today, bro? How'd you do? Did you do good? Where'd you fall from grace? What was it that caused you to go unconscious for the rest of the day? What was that moment? Now, if you're a student of life, you'll begin to contemplate, well, it was that person that said that thing, then I reacted, or I got this email, or things didn't go my way, and I started feeling angry or frustrated or fearful. The next time that happens, how could I involve my experience? Now, you may have to search for some answers of the best model to build, or you may actually have a long contemplation and start to go, oh, the next time that happens, I think I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that, or I'm going to plan my behaviors. And the act of closing your eyes and rehearsing what you're going to do begins to install the neurological hardware in your brain to look like you already did it. Now the brain is no longer a record of the past. Now it's a map to the future. And if you keep installing that hardware, the hardware will become a software program, which means you'll just start acting like a happy person. Why? There's no magic there. You installed the circuitry. So that's more important than the news. It's more important than answering any email or any text. It's more important than talking about your past or some dinner. If you can begin to just think about how you're going to do it differently, that's the building process neurologically already. So now you have to get conscious in order to do that. And it takes some time. It means you got to shut your cell phone off. You got to close your door. You got to take a break from everything out there and begin to practice. And so by experience, then you start noticing, oh, here it comes. Here comes the frustration. Here comes the fear. And now we've given people the tools to be able to self-regulate, yes. to create brain and heart coherence. And so you see people say, excuse me one minute. I just need a minute. They take some breaths, they get back in, they connect to the energy of their future. This is incidental compared to where they're going. So they don't fall from grace. They don't allow their energy to drop. And so, yeah, in the beginning, it takes a lot because yeah. it takes a lot of energy and awareness to stay conscious and not go unconscious. But if you're persistent and you're determined and you're sincere, you begin to figure it out. You begin to say, I am not going to give my power away to that person or that circumstance when I can use it to heal or to create a new future. And so people then won't excuse themselves and say, I had a hard day yesterday, I had a fight with my coworker or my ex, or, and I don't feel like doing the work. Well, that's the time to get back on the horse because it's all of those times that we self-correct all of the hard work all the effort in who we become, no one can take that away from us. So then once we arrive at that level and we experience whatever the dream is or whatever we create, the next thing is, is do it until you fully enjoy it. And then when it gets boring or predictable, let's go again. We have a thousand reasons. I have more than a thousand reasons every day to be unhappy with managing companies and staff and people, all that. But then when you rise above that and you choose just who you want to be, I think it makes it big impression first yourself and your family and your friends and the people you work with and then finally the, our community but what that means is you feel so amazing that why would you want to hold a grudge against that person so forgiveness then is not something that you have to try to do to be spiritual it's the side effect of saying I don't want to give up this feeling for you or anybody, so I'm letting it go. I'm free in you. I'm free in myself. And my goodness, there's more liberation of energy. This is the most familiar, unfamiliar feeling you will ever have. It'll be distant and at the same time very close. And you'll start to see the hidden meaning behind all things. And now, when you walk in the presence of your greatest betrayer, the person who threw you under the bus, whatever it is, when you walk in from this place, there will be no emotional reaction. You will just see that person for who they are, who you used to be. Compassion then is no longer something that you have to try to do. It's the end product of doing the work. Mystics and saints and masters of, of old understood this. When they thought of that person, they didn't allow that thought to produce a feeling or an energy that would lower their energy. They understood that when they had the thought of that person, they saw their limitation. It wasn't hurting them. It was only hurting themselves. Now, I think that if the world was doing that, wow, we'd have a very different world.